Hi, this is Thomas. Welcome to Statistics. Today we're going to learn about the analysis of discrete data. We have a data set in the middle of the screen with 12 items, and each of those items has a particular measurement. X represents some type of measurement. Before we get into the analysis of this data set, let's contrast discrete data with the concept of continuous data. Discrete data is not continuous. We're going to learn about continuous data in a later lesson. Comparing the two, discrete would be, for example, counting number of people. There is an integer limit to a person. There are two people, three people, 8,000 people, but not three and a half people. Continuous would be something like measuring the weight of people and there are an infinite number of options for weight because for example if we want to look at the range of 150 pounds to 151 pounds between those two we could have 150.1, 150.5, 150.9, 150.99999 etc. That concept, weight, is an example of a continuous concept what we're looking at is the concept of discrete data and again my example was counting the number of people in a particular situation that's an example of discrete data let's start with the concept of measuring the center of the data and then we're going to look at the concept of measuring the spread of the data and we have three ways to measure the center of the data First is mean, and mean is the same as average. The way we calculate the mean is we're going to sum all of our measurements, all of our x values, and we'll divide by the number of data points that we've collected. And in our data set, if we sum the x values, we have a total of 62. So if we add 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 7 plus 7, we arrive at 62. We divide by the number, we have 12 data points. And we end up with an approximate mean rounded to three significant figures of 5.17. So the mean or average of this data set is 5.17. That's one measurement of center. Another measurement is median. Now median is the middle data point. Notice in our data set we have an even number of data points. 6 and 7 are the two that are the center data points we don't have just one so in the case of our data set the way we're going to calculate the median is we're going to add the data points the data values for number six and number seven and we'll take the average so median if we have an odd number odd n then median is middle value and this is not our case in our case we have an even n so the way we address an even n is we add we sum two middle points and we divide by two so in our case the two middle points, 6 and 7, are 5 plus 6 divided by 2. 11 divided by 2 is 5.5. .5. The median of this data set is 5.5. .5. Again, in a data set with an odd number of data points, you simply take the middle data point as your median. And our third measure of center is the mode and the mode is the most frequent data point in our case we can look notice by the way these data 
these measurements are ordered, you won't always be given data in ordered order. You might need to order the data on your own. In other words, notice we start at 3, we go down to 7. The data won't always be provided in order. You might need to arrange it to have it in an ordered format. In our case, as we can simply, as we have ordered data, let's simply go down and find the most frequent measurement, and that is 6. Notice that we have 4 6s. We have 3 3s, 3 5s, 4 6s, and 2 7s. So our mode is 6. It is possible to have more than one mode. If, for example, we had 4 5s, and four sixes, then we would have two modes, five and six. But in our case, six appears four times, and that's the most frequent measurement, so our mode is six. These are our three measurements of center, looking for the center of the data, mean, median, and mode. So now let's look at measurements relating to the concept of the spread of the data. Starting with range. And the range is the maximum data value minus the minimum data value. In our case, the maximum data value, these are ordered. We can simply look down at the bottom to see the maximum value is 7. The minimum value is 3, so the range, 7 minus 3, is 4. Next we'll look at the concept of interquartile range, which is the upper quartile minus the lower quartile. And we use Q3 to reference the upper quartile and Q1 to reference the lower quartile. Now, we need to identify those values to calculate interquartile range. So let's find our lower quartile, or Q1. And for the lower quartile, I'm going to, as well as for the upper quartile, I'm going to split my data in half. I have 6 and 6. 1 to 6, 6 data measurements. 7 to 12, 6 data measurements. I'll look at the first 6 to determine the lower quartile and the second 6 to determine the upper quartile. If we had an odd number of data points, then we would simply disregard the middle data point. In this case, we have an even number of data points, so we will look at the first six to determine lower quartile. And lower quartile as well as upper quartile are median type of calculations. When we calculate the median, if we have an even number of measurements, then we take the average of the middle two. So notice that's our scenario. We have six measurements of data in each of our halves. So to calculate my lower quartile, I'm going to focus on measurements 3 and 4, which are 3 and 5. And in, if, we had, if we had an odd number of data points, 5 or 7 or 9, we would simply take the middle data point as the lower quartile. In our case, because we have an even number, just like we do with median when we have an even number of data points, we take the middle two and we average them. So we'll calculate 3 plus 5 divided by 2 equals 4. Lower quartile is 4. Upper quartile is the same concept. This is Q3. And we know that in this grouping, the second half, we also have six measurements, so let's look at the two in the middle, measurement nine and ten. Those are six plus six divided by two equals six. 
And now we can complete the interquartile range. We can abbreviate as IQR equals Q3, which is 6, minus Q1, which is 4. Interquartile range is 2. So in this lesson, we've learned about the concepts of measurement of center and spread for discrete data. And in the next lesson, we'll learn how to analyze discrete data presented in the format of a frequency table. And that's coming up in the next video.